Yo, Switch so Talk Nation! On this week's episode, we'll be covering Fuego releases from One Us, Kang Daniel, Winner, and Suho. We'll also be cooking up some spicy news coverage, including YG shareholders meeting, Pledis Files lawsuit against Gil Young, and continued COVID-19 coronavirus and K-pop coverage. So prepare your body, relieve that quarantine boredom, because we back at it again! Hit me with that intro! Hey, what's up everyone? This is Soji Talk, your weekly shot at K-pop. We're coming at you with a super spicy episode 80, and we're recording on Monday, March 30th, 2020. I'm Doug, and joining me today, we got Warren. Hey, what's up everybody? And Anita. Hello. And as a quick reminder, check out Soji Talk on iTunes, Spotify, or your favorite podcast platform. Sub to the Soji Talk YouTube channel, join the Soji Talk Discord, and be a part of the Soji Talk Nation. Alright, we got four announcements today. That's a lot. Ooh. Number one, we have decided to break up our episodes on YouTube into two parts. This is mostly due to the growing length of the podcast, and we've seen some like exporting issues behind the scenes. Like Warren has attempted to export like six times over like twenty four hours. It's been a mess, but we think that the issue is the length of the podcast. So the audio podcast will remain one piece, and the YouTube will now be in two separate videos. And we apologize for any inconvenience. Sorry, everyone. Number two, Girl Group Hall of Fame from last week. The Nation has spoken and Wonder Girls has been added to the Hall of Fame lineup of SES, Girls' Generation, 21, and Twice. i personally done some thinking and researching, and I do see the argument for Red Velvet as the fifth group based on accomplishment, but that's a discussion for a completely another time. Yeah, another time, please. Oh, man. Spicy. Number three, big shout out to Billboard. The Billboard, right? They briefly mentioned Soji Talk in their K-pop podcast to check out during coronavirus lockdown. It is an honor and a privilege. And number four, to Anita for finally starting to use face cam on the podcast. It has taken 30 Ooh. episodes since Warren and I have begun, yes. began using face cams all the way back in episode 50. And now on the beautiful release day of April 1st, you all have the pleasure of looking at Anita's beautiful face, truly the flower uh, of the Soji yeah. Talk crew. <laughs> Anita, what? It, it's it's truly a pleasure to be able to look at your eyes while we record. One other thing, um, before we get to the actual podcast, there, like Warren might not be synced with his voice. Anita may sound a little bit difficult. There was about an hour of technical issues. <laughs> we doing this live. It's happening. All right. So, all right. Now we are at part one of Soji Talk episode eighty, where we discuss big new releases. Take a quick rewind and hit you with them music show winners. Let's get it. So the big new releases from the past week. On March 24th, Tuesday, we had One Us with a song written easily and Kang Daniel with To You. March 26th, Thursday, we had Winner with Hold. And then on March 30th, Monday, we had Suo's solo debut with Let's Love. But let's start at the top with One Us's A Song Written Easily. So, you know, One Us is from RBW, the same company as Mamamoo. They debuted in 2018. Their last three songs were Lit, which Warren's not the biggest fan of, Twilight, and Valkyrie. They have zero music show wins so far. My first take is that this is a very big departure from Lit and the general One Us sound. I think yes. that is mm. fairly obvious in this one. Now, I don't have any major issues of the song, but seasonally, I thought that it felt a little bit out of place. I kind of heard this song more of like a summer song, and we are in the end of March, so that just might be something I'm feeling, you know? That being said, I do enjoy the beautiful nature shots, as I've been stuck in this house for two weeks plus at this point. So <laughs> anytime oh, there are nature shots, your boy Doug, I'm down for him right now. Um, Let's see. A lot of vocal focus in this song was on Gunhee, who's the, the main vocalist, and he is my favorite member of One Us, so I thought that was pretty cool. Lastly, overall, I thought that this song is solid, but nothing that got me super hype, and I'm excited to see One Us on Kingdom, and maybe my expectations for them are just a little bit too high right now, because they are technically still rookie-ish. But those are my takes on a song written easily. What about you, Warren? It's It's been a meme. It's it's been a meme how much I ha have strong <laughs> feelings for their previous comeback, mm -hmm. um, lit uh, as you briefly mentioned, and you know, that's kind of why I came in with like bottom tier expectations. And you know, I mean, it was a lot better than that expectation. It was it was a fine song. It was fine. It was fun. It was a it was a moonbathon, albeit a little emotional. Um, it felt like they were taking. Uh, they were they were stretching out the Moonbathon trend a little bit, making it more suitable uh, for the winter. 
vibe, um, you know, which makes sense. Um, I am not super familiar with their stuff before Lit, so I'm not a departure from their previous sound or not. But I will say, um, every a lot of the things I did not like with Lit is not present in this song. Um, so that with that being said, nothing really that stands out to me as like I don't like One Hot Story. I don't like this song anymore. It's it's just a fun song. It's enjoyable. It's like it's likable. Um. It's a little forgettable, a little bit. Um, but, but you know, I do the nature shots do are pretty impre- uh, impressionable, especially with uh, the current circumstances. I would say, but you know, I mean, in in general, it's a likable song, not super memorable to me personally. But you know, at at the same time, I, I'm thinking about lit, which I which was very memorable for the wrong reasons for me personally. <laughs> um. So from that as uh, you know, big thumbs up. Yeah, I, I really like One Us. I think they're great. They have a lot of choreo focused things, which I think is always a positive. Mm-hmm. I do agree with Warren. My main thing is like I don't know if I'll remember this song in about two months. And although you may like Lit or not like Lit, at least it's memorable in one way or the right. other. And sometimes, like yeah. no news is bad news, that kind of saying. But um, Anita, what did you think of a song written easily? Um, I would have to agree with what you mentioned, Doug, about the the sound being a little interesting due to the the time of the season or like the month that it's released in. Um, I also found like the combination of like the set and the styling and the boom baton sound was a little interesting because I didn't really think um there was like a lot of coherence between the two. I think it was more of a contrast, but I, th- I didn't think it was bad. It was just interesting that they chose to do it that way. Um, as far as the sound goes, though, I I also have to say that the the type of... Uh, I think Warren mentioned it before we started recording, like emotional boom baton sound mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is, yes. reminds me of something that ATs did last year. Um with another song called Promise. Um, it wasn't a, a, an A track, I don't think, but it mm. it had like a, a music video, like a, a choreo and stuff. Um, and I kind of had that vibe. Um, so it's really interesting that they're doing this now because it, it does feel like it has been done before, but the, the time that they're doing it in is a little different. Um, mm-hmm. So a lot of the choices of the timing and genre that they're using for this comeback is very interesting um but i also feel like it's a very safe sound because there's definitely an audience that likes it um if it's still trendy as a yeah that, that was my other concern because i was under the impression that moonbathon uh the entire uh boom ba boom ba boom ba boom ba sound <laughs> has been like oh. I was not even trying to be jokeful at that point. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I thought it was a trend that is moving on. Like, we're kind of... Yeah. All right. Well, what, what does Moombathon our... sound like, Warren? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Continue. <laughs> Continue. Uh, I, look, I thought it was a trend that um, has we've kind of moved on from. Um, mm. I do think it's a little. It does kind of move away from the typical Moombathon song because you know it, they try to take more of a melodic, more of, more of an emotional approach. Do I think that was the best approach they should have could have gone on? I don't. I don't know. I honestly don't know. Uh, but I, my gut feeling says I'm um, probably not. There might have been better options out there, but albeit I don't think it was a horrible option. It was a pretty good option, I think, and, and they went with it. So you know, it was pretty. Yeah. Good. Yeah. I, I I guess I was just most shocked that I was like, in my head on first listen, I'm like, this is a summer song. This is like a June, July yeah, release, yeah. and I was like, mm-hmm. it, it's kind of the end of March. But at the same time, I'm like, sunshine's good because y'all know I haven't been outside in a while. So yeah. <laughs> that being said, but, there was a point where they were wearing pink suits in like the sunset. That was a beautiful shot. It was a beautiful mm-hmm. shot, but I was like, why are they wearing pink suits? I I also wanted to know where they filmed a lot of this because like I know Korea has like mountain faces because it's a mountainous area but like mm. they were in like craters at some point and i was like jesus where the hell are they but you know now talking about sets i'm gonna pivot to the next song so Aww. 
Mm. Kang Daniels to you. He is from Connect Entertainment, which is his own company now. He debuted in 2017 with 101. His last two solo songs were Touching and What Are You Up To? He has two music show wins as a solo artist. 49 with 101. Oh, wow. This is that quarantine music video. <laughs> Let me explain. Oh. It, was, it was all filmed in one location, right? Wow. This entire music video was just filmed in that theater. That being said, something about the camera work for this music video I thought was amazing. And it did have a movie aesthetic going. And it did have mm-hmm. like a storyline. And I thought it was ironic because it's in a theater. So it had this whole kind of like movie feel going mm. on. Right. But... My homie Daniel is about to get arrested because he runs into the girls' bathroom at one point oh, yeah. before the chorus. I was like, okay, fam. But bear with me now. Something's going to happen. But talking about the song, I really enjoyed it. And there's something about Kang Daniel that is just energetic like a spring breeze. He burns it oh. up. And between comebacks, I'm just waiting for him to come back like a boomerang. Wow. So <laughs> I'm embarrassed at myself for saying that. But man our, overall, our listeners who love puns but just exploded just there <laughs> overall to you i thought it was another very solid kang daniel song i find myself liking kang daniel more for him than the music i don't know if that's a terrible take mm. to make there because i really like kang daniel as like a person <laughs> i don't know he was on running man last week i like seeing him on variety shows but that being said there was nothing wrong with this I really liked the song. I thought the choreography was cool. There was a lot of partner dancing, which these days isn't too commonplace. And I thought overall the vibes of the song were great. But I uh, similarly with the one us song, I don't know if this is the most memorable song either. But those are my takes. What about you, Warren? Mm. I generally agree. That's and, and and kind of in more extreme way. Cause this was okay. Let's kind of think about Kang Daniel's career. He he had a debut. Uh, he had another song at, at the end of last year, and then this is supposedly the first part of a three-part EP trilogy. Mm-hmm. Um, there's gonna be three EPs in a row, apparently, and this is the per- first part to it. And something tells me that I don't see that. Like I, I, I read it in the album description. I uh, read it in the marketing material. I don't see it in the song. I don't see it in the music video. So that's kind of not super exciting um um w- when i see trilogies happen i i feel like there's something that you know that the first one when you have a trilogy of songs when you have a first one i i i, I need some sort of sense of things being kicked things being kicked off uh some sort of things mm-hmm. uh you know where they're like there's there's gonna, there's gonna be like you know we're leading into something we're not telling you what it is yet you know but you know watch out for a comeback in four months and, and then you'll find out something like that uh didn't really happen albeit that's not really easy to do so i'm not gonna point fingers and being like you know that's a horrible song that being said the song is fine the song is great uh, it's a it's a more like a poppy PBR and B song, you know, a little bit of dance, a little bit of groove, a little bit of smoothness in there, which I feel like Kang Daniel portrays really, really well. Um, that being said, again, I man, I'm not gonna remember this in a week. That's the problem. Mm. And I already realized I'm having that issue with all of Kang Daniel's songs because they're some medium slower tempoed r&b songs with a pop twist on it um you know it's not something that requires a lot of vocal effort but it's not like he's pushing harder for the indie r&b vibe he's still trying to very stay consistent with the mainstream k-pop sound and it's kind of like he hasn't figured out what would sell very well um in terms of being a mainstream K-pop idol or like, do you want to be this guy like Hayes who makes like, you know, cafe music? It just doesn't fit into anything and not in respect to him being unique, but more so, you know, if you're a fan of Kang Daniel, that's good. He's pushing out good stuff. It's fun music. But besides that, I don't, I don't like, I don't, I can't see, I, I can't, I don't know. Maybe if you like a smile, you might start liking it. Man, you know, I, I, I disagree with you on some of this. <laughs> okay. Okay. I remember touching not only for the song, but for the music video, because we did say it was one of the best music videos for a while when we mm. reviewed it. Yes. I mean, that was literally... 
all right, well, go someone go back and make and quote him because I'm pretty sure he also liked the music video. But, I like um, the music video. I like the music video. It's, I'm not saying it's a bad music video, but I still think he's just figuring out what he's trying to do. It is you have you have to put into context that it's his own company, right? He's boss. Mm-hmm. He has final say on all of this, and he's doing pretty well considering that fact. I think at this point, I I'm think... not expecting anything crazy already. I mean, you know, it's his company, but he shouldn't be unless I don't know if he wants creative control, then he should go with it and then show me that he has creative control and be really decisive in something that hasn't happened yet for me personally. Or maybe it has for other people. Um, but I if mean, he does have cr- creative control over like over the production, like depression, uh, I don't know. That, that's I mean, to, to be fair, I think it's kind of objective to say he got number one on 101. A lot of it to do with him as a person, because I don't think anyone said he was the most talented trainee that season. I mean, I, I'm not saying no. It, his personality, I'm I'm sure, is a really appealing. I haven't seen produced, but I can see that he's like, he has a very radiating smile per se, and like that's that is the very impressive part. I'm talking about in terms of like musical direction. It's not super memorable yet. Yeah, if but that makes I, any sense. I think the I think your expectations are a little too high for him right now. <laughs> I, I personally. I mean, he was first place and produced. He he. This is his third comeback. I have. I think I have certain expectations that I would like to. All right, Anita, but hit us with your takes on to you. Um. So for me, I feel like this comeback is very much has that vibe of being very chill, very laid back, and um. I think for this particular song, he really focused on the choreography, or it mm-hmm. seems that way because. Um, I think he's been known for his dance skills throughout Produce and then 101. Um, but I feel like for this one in particular, he really showcased that, especially with the backup dancers. Um, I saw some videos he did for like a B side of the album. And mm-hmm. I, I just feel like the emphasis is very much on the choreography for a lot of his songs for this particular album. So I think it's nice to see that he's he knows his strong point. And I think he's doing it very well, like choosing to focus on that um, as well. I do agree with Warren um, in the sense that this song still feels very safe. Um, I I guess since he's gone solo, I've noticed that he knows what he is very capable of as a performer. So, of course, he's going to show kids his dancing and his vocal is very stable. Like it's not trying anything risky like trying to hit super high notes um like he knows what he is good at like what suits his voice and i think it's it's good to see that but i also want to see if he's willing to take a different route or go more on a left field and try a different genre um i don't know if he's ever going to put out like a a ballad a track to be honest because i feel like that's what a lot of produced people have been doing um, mm-hmm. post one one but I I don't know. I feel like he he has the popularity and the momentum so far that he could try something else as well. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. Yeah, uh, yeah. Going back to my discussion with Warren, I do see what you mean by it. it is safe a little bit now that I think about it. You know, we know he's going to sell well, a chart pretty well, because he is mm. Kang Daniel. But if you pair that with something fire and a little risky, that that would yeah. be the, the combination, wouldn't it? Yes, I think that's what I'm waiting for from him. I I, I do understand why he would want to be a little safe. um, mm-hmm. Because early on in his solo, solo career, things happened. I get it. Um, But, I mean, it's, if you have fans after that, there's still a good amount of fans left. And they seem like they're gonna keep supporting him. Why don't yeah. you know? Just go on adventures, man. You know? Yeah, he, he seems to have quite a bit of control too. Like we mentioned. Yeah, I'm assuming uh, he has so final creative control. He could go for it. Really? Dang. If he, if he does have creative control, I, I mean, I would... he's the CEO of the company. <laughs> I mean, I'll. Uh, it's the, okay, if if I was a singer, I would give the creative direction to a producer or like an outside. Oh uh, yeah, he might have a team. Yeah. Mm. Right. But that being said, whoever is in creative control right now, I feel like would make more strong decisions as per mm. Anita. I agree. Yes. Okay, yeah, that. Awesome. <laughs> Before we move on to the next song, 
I think we figured out some of these technical issues. <laughs> like, yeah. If you didn't notice, before Adidas spoke, we switched some, like, there was a cut, and Warren was hella laggy during his thing. Like, it was like, he was, his mouth would open, and then he would say something, and then his mouth would open in the camera for 10 seconds later, and then Anita, like, we recorded it. Like, I know we, there's a joke that she's a robot. She was literally a robot for about five minutes <laughs> before she completely lagged out, which was a blessing in disguise, but we switched some things around. I think we're good. Let's move on to the next song. So the third song we're reviewing on March 26th, Thursday, we had Winner with Hold. They are from YG, debuted in 2013. Last three songs were So So, All Yeah, and Million. 23 music show wins so far. This is a pre-release single from their upcoming album in April, written by Mino and composed by him and YG ma label mate and producer RT. In my opinion, this is 100% a certified spicy song. Ooh. It is a 10 out of 10 music video with yes. at least a 9 out of 10 song. Trolley winner is best winner. <laughs> and I think that the choreography in this song Although it is the goddamn can can dance, it is the best, like one of the best things about this song because it is so mm. trolly and it fits the concept so perfectly. Now, I, you know, Warren specifically mm. requested we review this song. This is the first time that has ever happened since Ooh. starting the podcast in 80 episodes. Because initially we were not going to cover this, it was just going to be mentioned at the end because it's a pre release. And Warren was like, we're reviewing this song. I was like, okay. But now going into the song itself and the music video, the music video itself is clearly about, I think, a group of brothers who are super protective mm, of their little mm -hmm. sister, who is played by Akdong's, well, Akmu Suhyun. The lyrics are more in the perspective of a guy, though, who is who likes a girl but is unsure how she feels. So there's a little bit of disconnect there. Um, yeah. Yeah. And there is a clear reference to Parasite in the music video with the door scene. 100%. Yeah. It's undeniable there. But for me, Mino is a straight up genius with this song. And I thought that the other members did a great job in their rapping and singing parts. I thought that the drop was fire. The dance was fire. Music video is one of the best music videos I've seen in a while. Mm. Overall, for me, certified spicy, regardless of what you guys think. But <laughs> I'll let y'all go. Anita first, give us your takes on hold. Uh, well, I also agree. This was my favorite music video from this week. Uh I, I don't know. I, I've repeated it a lot of times, but I'm a sucker for very retro themes mm -hmm. uh, in songs and music. And this definitely had that. Um, the cost, the, the outfits, the sets. I love the sets. Like uh, the house. It was house like a 90 sitcom. It was like Full yeah, House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight yeah, up. The sitcom. Yeah, I really like that. I think they really. They really sold like, the whole storyline of the brothers. It was a little confusing if you if you hear like the lyrics of the song but mm -hmm. it, it it's still really fun um i also feel like the song itself is super catchy um so i don't know i feel like for this i i kind of see that winner's charm is to not overcomplicate things i feel like they their songs are not super super um complex as far as like what's going on in the chorus and the verses and like musically it's not too hard to understand but it's so catchy and they make it really fun um so i, I think it's, it's i don't know it, it complements each other so well like the music video and the song uh, maybe because in the music video there's quite a bit going on visually and like storyline but the song itself is not too much mm -hmm. um so i don't know i think this was really really fun um, I hope they do more of this yes, for the rest of the please, album because <laughs> I really like it. <laughs> yeah, just the, like the trolley nature of this song is so perfect. I don't know, mm. Warren. Give us your takes on this song. I mean, I, I don't, I don't, I don't think I have to say much. Really, it's certified spicy. <laughs> I agree. I agree. Oh, uh, This is yay. officially certified spicy. Then, boom. Yes. Uh, you know, right off the bat, um, we come in with Can Can, you know, Orpheus in the Underworld, whichever name you prefer, with the dance and with the main loop, mm -hmm. um, the dun dun da 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 that part, um, playing through the entire song with a pluck, works really well. It's not super often that I hear a classical music, uh, sample placed into songs like these really really well. Uh, it, 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 this, you know, it, it's very natural. Um, it makes sense. Um. The way they did it almost reminds me of like Geary Boy, um, you know, like mm. songs like Ding and like Flex, um, but in a good way. It, it takes, 
you know, I, I, I can kind of see where there's similarity, but it also takes a very mainstream approach um, in terms of song structure and like pacing and arrangement and whatnot. And it, it, it does, there's not a single part in the song where I'm like not bored. There's, there's always mm. new directions, new changes. There's yep. like a part of in the build up right before the chorus where they uh, go a single note up. And that that's like not something you've seen K-pop often. So like stuff like that is really cool. Music video, regardless of what anyone really says, perfect music video, best perfect yes. video perfect. of 2020. Um, yes. this this cannot be topped. Uh, this, um, it's it's great, and I don't know if I want to see their next comeback be something like this. I'll be honest. Really? You know, I was hoping. Why couldn't this have been the A track? <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Like this is so it good. Could have been. This is so it, good. This is the pre-release of their full length album. So mm. I'm guessing they're like you know pre-release. Let's play. Let's have a bit of bit more fun. You know, let's joke around mm. a little bit before we go back to standing around looking sexy. Um, I mean, we <laughs> liked So So right, but I really hope this isn't a, a, like a slow A track. I'm really hoping it's not. If we get a slow A track in like some slow trap PBR and B thing, I will be angry. I'll be <laughs> yeah. angry. You you build up with this and you give me like typical. No, please don't. Um. But you know, uh, you know, I'm super excited for what they have next, and I'm super sad because suddenly, now I really like Winner, and mm. this is their last thing before they go to the military. Yeah, that oh. is true. That's been confirmed. A couple of the members are going Dang. after this. Uh, but I really do like that they're not taking this super seriously. It's not. Mm-hmm. It's not something super common in K-pop, and when it is done, it's kind of cringy. I'll, I'll be honest. Yeah. I don't know why this isn't. Maybe it's because I'm used to seeing these members in Variety a lot, especially mm-hmm. with Mino or Mino, whatever you prefer. Um, but it, it everything works so well. The music video works perfectly. The song works perfectly. There's not a single part where I would be like angry. Suhan mm-hmm. is great. I the the acting was surprisingly good. Like I it was, was so shocked fun. how good it was. Like when when they're like trying to open the door and they have like fake sweat on someone's head, like things like that, <laughs> and then. When the 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 date comes to the door and they're all of a sudden they're like gangsters, it's so yes. funny. <laughs> wow, this is this is this is amazing. I think it's like, amazing. Ten you out gotta of think 10. if if you sh- if you played someone so so and you played them hold back to back, like and say this is the same group, this is what they do, you would be so <laughs> confused by that. Two totally different songs and two pretty good songs overall, but winners hold officially. Certified spicy. I think this is the least we've discussed if a song is certified spicy. That's true. Most easily certified spicy within our list of certified spicy. All right, now let's go on to our last song. So it was released earlier today on March 30th, Monday. It is Suo's solo debut with Let's Love. So he is from SM Entertainment. He debuted back in 2012 with EXO. The last three EXO songs were Obsession, Love Shot, Tempo, 107 music show wins with EXO. I think that this is one of those songs that you will like if you like ballads or if you are a fan of Suho or EXO, right? Mm. I personally like ballads, so I think this is a pretty good, solid song. <laughs> Warren is neither of these groups, so I am wondering <laughs> if he will like the song. In fact, my mom said today, because sometimes in the morning on podcast day, I play all the music videos and sometimes my family watches them too. Mm-hmm. My mom says, Warren doesn't like any songs. <laughs> that was her quote. <laughs> And as she doesn't think you're going to like this one. Um, oh. You know, for me, this music video, the use of lighting was one of the most mm. memorable things. Especially that swinging light that they had going at certain points. I thought that was great. You know, his visuals are next level. SM's one of the few companies that will give you like an eight second pan of just your face because they know you're so good looking. <laughs> that happened a couple times in this music video. And... um. I think if you're a fan of Suho, you're probably really down for this. They show off how good looking he is, how dec- how like solid of a singer he is. And I he, I think he's another person who's going to go to the military soon too. So this is sort of a goodbye yeah. song for him as well. Um, I think with most ballads and particularly this one, it's going to chart very well. And I think it does appeal to certain people and will be overall successful in the Korean market. But I don't know what our boy Warren's going to think. So I'm going to pass the mic as we say to him. So... <laughs> So all my notes mm-hmm. were based on how this song is not a ballad. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay, go, go on. Go, 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 go. So 
I, I, I can see where the confusion comes. It, it, it is yeah. very similar to yeah. a typical Korean ballad, but it, the song is, it's more of a modern rock song. Um, yes. Slow paced modern rock, which in mm. K-pop has been a dead genre for a long time. Mm-hmm. F- from like the mid 2000s. So like, I, I can see where the confusion is coming from. It, there is a lot of, lot of, lots of places where it's mirrored. Personally, I don't dislike modern rock. I, I'm, yes. you, I usually like it. Um, I've been getting back into it largely because of uh, the J-Rock stuff and then some of the indie mm. rock stuff I've been listening to, mm-hmm. like Adoi and then like um, Tanabi and stuff like that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That being said, uh, it's still, I, I would have to call it the most mainstream genre out there, style of music out there. Um, and there are definitely, I think, a lot of places where it appeals outside the ballad market. And I think it's time it comes back. Mm-hmm. I, as much as I love hip hop, as much as I love rap, look, it's been on the charts for a long time. It's mm-hmm. about time we move off a little bit, give Ooh. some <laughs> genres like these. And you know, I it's it's wonderful that you know, um companies like SM with their big money is doing stuff like this. This and was big money. This was a big, big money, money. song. It, it's very solid production. I think it's one of the most I don't know. It's a really well-made modern rock song. That being said, I don't know that much about rock, modern rock, or stuff like that, contemporary rock music. But it, 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 I, I still like it. It's I dig. It's the the thing is nobody has done this in a long time in terms of mm-hmm. this mainstream scale, and that's why I dig it so much. It does everything it needs to really, really well. It stands out from the crowd, and I get it. SM can do it because they're in this position where they're when they can be when when where they can be the trendsetters. Uh, but you know they are taking full advantage of that. They're taking advantage of the fact that hey, Suo has this fan base. Let's give him you know something new, something different. Um, make him stand out a little bit. Maybe appeal to a newer audience. Maybe give him a new fan like me, Warren here. Suddenly, I like this guy. I don't. Bro, everyone Whoa. who you like now is going to the military straight. Oh, <laughs> straight up. This is really what's what's happening right now. Um, the the Warren military curse, essentially. <laughs> I think it's only also a really good direction in terms of like his his vocal style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't I don't know Suho too well, and I don't know EXO too well. So if I am incorrect, please feel free to be angry at me in the comments on YouTube. But my understanding is that he's a lead vocal. He's not the most capable in terms of vocal capabilities or like they're like being like strong vocalness. That's not a word, but you get the idea. Mm. With that being said. With all that in mind, this felt very appropriate for his voice. It yes, did. It, it felt did. super appropriate. Yeah. I feel like I'm stealing everything Anita's gonna say. I'm so sorry. You are. <laughs> no, no, I, I think it's good because Anita, Anita can give us more context on Suo as a idol because she she does mm-hmm. like EXO. And I, I I'm pretty sure she has a decent understanding of Suo and who he is and what he brings. So Anita, hit us with your takes on Let's Love. Well... I'm just going to add more to what Warren has already stated because my first point was going to say that even though this does sound like a ballad, it has that rock band feel to it, which is so refreshing. I feel like this is the kind of stuff that I gravitate to in the K-Rock, K-Indie space. Um, Mm -hmm. So I like that this is overlapping with idol music as well. Um, And I definitely agree that Suho's voice quality really fits this i feel like it sounds so good that i wouldn't be surprised if if he had a a group and he was the lead vocal of a group that was doing this because it just sounds very very well intertwined like the instrumental and his voice sounds so good together um and after i listened to this song i went and listened to the medley for the mini album Mm -hmm. um and I I feel like that's kind of the vibe he's going for. Like it's more of a ballad and like modern rock type of sound. I think there was one other track I can't remember the name that had this kind of sound as well. Mm-hmm. Maybe not as prominent, but I I really like it. I feel like this. this I, as soon as I listened to it, I was like, oh, this this is what I would listen to, in like I don't, I don't know, just very K indie, but not necessarily indie stuff is more like rockish soft ballad type of thing um but i'm really glad he's doing this and as far as like comparing his vocals within exo and as a soloist um i feel like within exo he's 
been very stable. Like he's a lead vocalist, um, not main. So he's not the one really belting out the high notes or doing like a very specific run or something like that. Mm-hmm. But he's still very much stable um, in the vocal department. I feel like he's definitely showing off more of like the tone and like I don't know the the clarity of his voice with this kind of genre mm. because I think with a lot of Exo's music it's a little bit more hardcore a little bit more upbeat and um I don't know I feel like Suho's voice is not necessarily bad with that kind of sound but it definitely shows off how well it suits this kind of sound in comparison I would say um but yeah, I really, really like this. I think I also, when I listened to this song, I also thought of another vocalist. I think he's a soloist. And I want to say his, their name is Off on Off. Oh um, my gosh. And uh, I can't remember the name of the song, but there's a song that they had a while ago. And I kind of thought of that song as well, that kind of genre, because it has like that kind of indie kind of, not necessarily ballad, but it's it's slower, but with a still a little up tempo, like some drum still keeping up, uh, like the beat of the song. So I don't know. I really like this. Uh, I hope he does more of this. I know he's going to mm-hmm. the army, but I don't know. This is really really good. I just feel like he should just commit to this a hundred percent. Awesome. I was gonna ask if this is certified spicy, but personally, I don't think it is. So that's okay. Oh man, would it's you give it it certified spicy in my heart? I'm kind of on the edge. I'll be honest. All right, so sorry, Suho, but it's, it is a solid <laughs> song, though. I mean, I gotta keep my standards high with, <laughs> cause like I, I like Warren didn't give Fiesta certified spicy. Come Ooh. on, fam. Oh, actually, I'm never gonna let yeah, you. Yeah, we that didn't give Fiesta spicy, so no. All right. Other songs that were released this week include Ong Song Woo. He also had a song called Gravity. The music mm. video is a like again, it's way more acting focused, but it, the song is a lot better than some of his other releases. Person, like that's what I personally think. Mm. I think it is a return to form for him. But there is a dance version of the song. I just wish that they had incorporated that into the music video. Mm. Next, the second song was Stray Kids on track. On track is the second single from the group's mixtape project following Gone Days and in celebration of their second anniversary. So shout out to Stray Kids and their second anniversary. We got a new segment next, everyone. It is called A Quick Rewind. So inspired by the popularity of The Apology from episode 78, A Quick Rewind (laughs) is a new segment where the crew will go back and see if their views have changed on recent releases as promotions are wrapping up. Shout out to Jakob from the Discord for suggesting this. So how this is going to work is we're basically going to look at songs that came out three weeks ago because three weeks is about the span of promotions. And then we're going to see if we have any differing opinions. This might be a short segment. This might be a little bit longer. We have no clue. So back on episode 77, we reviewed NCT 127's Kick It, which got certified spicy. Victon's Howling and Itzy's Wannabe. Has crew opinion changed on any of these songs in the past three weeks? Mmm... I would like to say something about Wannabe. Okay. Because okay. when we reviewed it at the time, I said that I was really bothered by the chorus. And to be honest, I feel like in, at this moment, that's that's what I remember the most now. <laughs> Anita, Anita, you are just saying the things I want to say. I have listened to Wannabe, I think, 80 times since we reviewed this song. It's, it's pretty good. It's growing on me now. It's growing I was the on one, me. Yeah, and I was the one who did really like Wannabe at the beginning. I like it even more now. Yeah. I listen to it all the time. I know Warren probably hasn't changed his opinion on Wannabe, but... I, I haven't I haven't changed my opinion yet. Um, For <laughs> me, um, Victon's Howling, it it did suffer a little bit, like I said before, where it, well, I didn't find it... I, I really like this one, but you guys said it wasn't super memorable. I do kind of agree with that. For mm-hmm. me, NCT 127, Kick It, right? Mm-hmm. I think it's a great song for NCT 127. I just haven't listened to it that much since then, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Kick I'm It is the, the Yeah, same. Kick It is the one song on this list that I've only gone back. This is the only song on the list that I've gone back. Like, mm-hmm. I don't remember Howling at all. I'll be honest. I'm sorry. Um, mm-hmm. Wanna Be, I remember it. I, don't, I, just, I just recognize that it's not for me. And then Kick It, I'm like, yeah, 
<laughs> Bruce Lee. <laughs> really? Okay. I mean, it's it's good that we talk about these things because sometimes like things change after three weeks, right? Anita was did not like the chorus. Now she likes the chorus. Um, yeah, surprisingly. And with this segment, we cannot go back and give song certified spicy because it is the one week first week impressions of a song. So sorry, to wannabe. Even though Warren still wouldn't have given it certified spicy. Nah. But um. <laughs> Nah. You know, the reason why I've been watching a lot of these songs is I made a playlist on YouTube of all the 4K plus choreography videos. Mm. Mm-hmm. So I've been watching, I don't know, that's like a thing for me now is like, I like some of these choreo, like they just doing the choreography. It's sometimes at music shows. Sometimes it's like their own produced ones. I sometimes like them more than the music videos because there's no fluff. It's just them doing mm. the, the choreography. It's just the raw choreo, nothing. But else. that's gonna that's gonna lead into our hot take later. But um, now Anita hit us with them show winners. Okay, so on Tuesday on the show, Sejong's Plant had its first win for uh this uh promotion, and it's also the first win ever. So congrats yeah. to her. So for that one, I accidentally said last week that she had she had one win. But mm. ironically, she does have one win now. So <laughs> shout out to Sejong. <laughs> hey, you read into the future. I did, apparently. Yes. Uh, and then following day on Wednesday on Show Champion, it sees Wannabe won. And also on Thursday on End Countdown, Wannabe won once again. On Friday, Music Bank, NCT 127 won for Kick It. And I believe this is their first win for the promotions. Mm-hmm. And then on Saturday on Show Music Corp, BTS On had another win. So they're up to 16 God in damn. this promotion. <laughs> and on Sunday on Inkigayo, Itzy had another win for Wannabe. So they're up to five wins in total. You know, the thing that surprises me, uh huh. we thought it was going to be a battle between Wannabe and Kick It, right? Mm. I don't I don't know if Itzy's won the war. Like quote unquote, I don't wait. Let's not say war because I don't want any fan the more here. <laughs> the competition, the competition, right? Mm. Yeah. We thought those songs were going to be competing. Itzy's walking away with it right now. Uh, mm. I mean, I'm not. I'm not saying one song's better or not, but I'm just saying based on the facts here, it's five to one right now. I'm I, even. I'm still surprised that BTS is still winning. 16, dude. <laughs> 16. Uh, they're literally unstoppable. Like, Jesus. Oh, Christ. my God. Oh. All right. But with that, we are now at the end of part one of Soju Talk episode 80. If you are listening to the audio version, sit tight. And if you are listening or not listening, watching on YouTube, head over to episode 80, part two. There'll be a video there for that. But we'll be back after a short break. Three, two, one. <laughs> 